We will finish off this chapter by uh, listening to the second half of our lecture, our audio lecture on the scientific method. So uh, we have talked about our hypothesis, we've talked about research methods, descriptive methods, we've talked about correlation methods, and now we're going to be talking about the actual experimental method. So we have our experiment. Remember, originally we were talking about eating fast and getting heartburn, but to simplify matters right now, we're going to use a basic scientific experiment. I'm going to follow this with a video, uh, and we're going to make it as simple as possible. Now, we're going to use an experiment measuring uh, plants and the amount of water and whether they'll grow taller or not. And we don't normally do that in psychology, but it'll be an easy way for you to remember things that are probably in your past that you did in biology in high school about your independent method, your independent variable, your dependent variable, you know, don't start screaming yet. I know it's difficult, but we're going to try to get through it as easily as possible. So, so we're going to test a hypothesis. And in this case, our hypothesis is going to be, I think, here's my hunch, I think if I add more water to a plant, it will grow taller. Very simple, very simple. So we've got to set up our experiment, and we're going to uh, do our experiment, and we're going to have two plants. We want to see if by adding more water to a plant, one plant will grow taller than the other. So in order to do this, we have to set up our experiment, and in this experiment, we're going to have two plants, and everything related to those two plants has to be exactly the same. It has to have control in our experiment. And as I explain it, you'll understand why. So we've got two plants. They should be exactly the same plant. It defeats the purpose if we have one plant that is... Uh, a fern that grows really fast and another that's maybe a Christmas cactus that grows really slow. You can't do that. You have to have exactly the same plant. The plants have to be in exactly the same spot. They have to get the same amount of light every day. They have to get the same water from the same spigot. The soil in the plant has to be exactly the same. Even the planter itself, you can't have one plant that has a plastic container and the other plant have a terracotta container because if you know anything about terracotta, it soaks the water. So if all these things aren't exactly the same, you don't know whether adding more water was the reason the plant got taller or it was because of one of these other variables such as the terracotta planter or the plastic planter, you just don't know. So everything has to be the same, including even like the temperature of the room. Uh, you go in every single day and water the plants at exactly the same time, and you measure your water out. So let's just say in our experiment, we're going to have our two plants and every single day at two o'clock, we go into the room the plants are right next to each other. They're, they're never moved. And uh, the light is exactly the same every day. We don't have one day we're closing the drapes, one day we're opening them. I think you're getting the idea of this. But we're going to put in two teaspoons of water in one plant. And in the other plant, we're going to have four teaspoons of water. So, you know, you have experimental plant one and experimental plant two. And you do this for, we'll say, 30 days, okay? And so we have two factors. One is the independent variable. And the independent variable is the thing that the scientist changes. And what are we changing in this experiment? We're changing the amount of water. So the independent variable is the amount of water. The dependent variable is what depends upon that amount of water. So the dependent variable is what the scientist focuses on 
to see how the change to the independent variable is responded to. So, in other words, the new value of the dependent variable is caused by and depends on the value of the independent variable. So, whether the plant gets taller or not depends upon that independent variable, which is the thing that the scientist is changing, which in this case is the amount of water. So, at the end of the experiment, you can say, yes, uh, there was a change. My hypothesis was right. More water creates a taller plant. Or you could say, no, there was no change at all in the experiment. It was null. I didn't have enough information. Or there was the actual opposite. Uh, the more water, perhaps it killed the plant. So you, at the end, you're going to come to some sort of conclusion with the experiment. So sometimes when we have our experiment, we're actually testing something like a drug, okay? And that's very common in the field of psychology. So we might have two groups of people who are taking an experimental drug. Maybe in this case, we're going back to our group of people who are going to get heartburn. So we might have two groups of people, uh, the group of people that's the control and the group of people that is the experimental group. The experimental group is going to get the drug that we're testing, and the control group is not getting the drug. So in that case, those people may be getting something called a placebo, and that could be a sugar pill. So for the people, they don't know what they're getting. They're blind to who's getting the actual drug and who's getting the placebo. So they don't know, all right? But in this case, the actual researcher, the person who's giving the experiment, they may know which group is getting the drug and which group is getting the placebo. The downside of that is they could be seeing things that don't really exist because they know which group is getting the drug and so that could be a problem okay so um, they might uh, be prone to look at something that doesn't really exist so if you really want to do a good job with your experiment what you would do is you would have a double blind experiment in which the researcher and the participants don't know who's getting the actual drug and who's getting the exp the uh, placebo and that makes it a really really fair test because there's no bias the experimenter is not seeing something that doesn't really exist so it's very important that you do uh, your research methods and you do your experiments and, and try to come up with some uh, causation to the results of your scientific experiment. Um, and very important to uh, psychological science for sure. So uh, please look at the video that I'm going to put on. It's a very simple video you know, almost for maybe a fourth grader, but you know, sometimes less is more and seeing it in action can really help. And after you're done and you've done all the steps that are within this one lesson, you're gonna finish this off by taking the quiz. And then next week we will move on to the biology of psychological science. Thank you very much.